Well, good morning, friends. Good morning, Saints, on this Saturday morning. And, uh, yeah. I know I'm running a little later than my normal schedule. A number of things going on today, so... But here I am. And here I am, walking down to the river. I stuck my head out the door about, uh, I don't know, 7.30 this morning. And, uh, it was downright cold. Promising to warm up but it definitely was not warm but uh, a couple hours later now and uh, it is quite nice out here i'm still wearing uh, you know my biggest hoodie that i have my biggest sweatshirt but uh, that's a uh, yeah it's gorgeous and it's going to be so much nicer Give this, uh, give this day a little bit of time to get going here and apparently that sun is going to be amazing today and warm looking forward to that got a lot on my plate today busy day but all good all good all good well here we are down at the river and uh, let's uh, Let's turn to the Word of God. Let's see what uh, the Lord wants to say to you today. I've uh, spent a fair bit of time on this one. It's been, uh, yeah. We're going to go to a book that uh, you probably haven't opened for a while. I'll confess I haven't either. The book of Jude. It's a one chapter letter written uh, it's located in the Bible right before the book of Revelation which is of course the last book in the Bible so here we are the second to last book but it's probably a one pager in your Bible and uh, you'll miss it if you uh, if you're flipping quickly so I'm gonna go to the, the little letter of Jude and uh, I wanna I wanna show you something here now the letter of Jude is a pretty strong letter of warning. Um, a lot of warnings in there about uh, you know people who bring division, who who uh, bring fear, who are not living, um, you know, they're claiming but not living in the truth. Um, you know, false prophets, all that kind of stuff. Like it's a it's a pretty pretty heavy book that way. But it addresses us as well. I mean, it, it's warning us in a huge way. The first 22, 23 verse, uh, first 19 verses, sorry. And then verse 20 pops up in here. It says this as a, I guess as an encouragement to you, and I hope I can get somewhere that you can read this. Verse 20. Can you see that? I can't see it on the screen. Jude, verse 20. But you, beloved, Building yourself up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. So here's here's how you build up. Here's how you stay strong. Of course, faith comes from hearing the word of God. So you need to stay in the word and pray in the Holy Spirit. That's how you're going to stay strong. I like it that Verse 21 says, and keep yourselves in the love of God. Keep yourselves. The, the original language there has the idea of holding on. Of being solidly anchored. All right? In the love of God. You do that, of course, by building up your faith through the word and through praying in the Holy Spirit. And we hold on. Keep ourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy, I'll just keep reading, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, which leads to eternal life. I just want to add a little theological point in here. We talk about being saved. Um, he says real clearly here, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And so our eternal life, my friends, is yet to come. 
He has saved me from my sin and is daily saving me from falling into sin and giving into temptation and from, you know, the thwarts of the enemy and all this kind of stuff. So our salvation is already but not yet. And so we need to keep working out our salvation. That's biblical. All right. So as a Christian, we don't just say, oh, I'm saved. And then we sit back and, you know, wait for that day. No, 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 no. We need to keep working out our salvation because daily there are temptations. Daily the enemy comes against us. Daily our living sacrifice <laughs> tries to get up off that altar. And so daily we need to be working out our salvation. And we do this, of course, by building up our faith in the Word and uh, praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping ourselves in the love of God, which we just read here in verse 21. And the book of 1 John speaks a lot about the love of God and keeps paralleling or tying together our declaration of love for God and our obedience to Him. Saying very clearly that we prove our words by our actions. So when it says here in verse 21, keep yourselves in the love of God, I'm quite convinced theologically that that means we need to continue in obedience. And that's how we keep ourselves in the love of God. Because anyone who says they love God and yet does not love their brother or does not follow the, the, you know, the, the commands of the Lord you know, is deceiving themselves. And so we need to stay, we need to keep ourselves in the love of God by remaining obedient and wait for the mercy. And then he goes on to say that as we're waiting on the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life, we now need to show mercy on those who doubt. And then it's this little phrase in here in verse 23, to show mercy without, oh sorry, to show mercy with fear. Can you read that? I know it's really hard to see. Show mercy with fear. We are to show people mercy with fear. <laughs> I actually had to go to the commentary this morning. Uh, I went to a number of different commentaries trying to understand that but boy does it ever make sense you see when we're showing people mercy people who are you know wrestling with their sin people who are who have fallen and that's the context here when we are showing people mercy we need to do so with fear and it says real real clearly there why it's fear of their sin we need to be cautious, extremely cautious, that we do not get caught up in that which caught them up. All right? There's a, a very real potential that when you are being compassionate to somebody who has fallen into sin, that in your compassion in your attempt to make them feel better about themselves, you can, number one, belittle their sin. Oh, it's not such a big deal. Or, oh, you know what? Everybody faces that. Or whatever. And as soon as you start that kind of talk, all of a sudden, you now have belittled that sin. And it's not that big of a deal to you either. Friends, we show mercy with fear. That makes sense. It sure does to me. It sounds like uh, James chapter 5. True religion is this. That you take care of the orphans and the widows. But keep yourself from sin. There's many a person who in trying to help out an orphan or a widow has fallen into sin. Friends, we're not going to do that. Because we are going to, according to Jude 1, 24, 
we are going to show mercy with fear. All right? Not fear of the person, but fear of the sin which has plagued them, which has bound them. We're going to keep ourselves clean, but we are going to show mercy. Let's pray. Father, our ultimate desire is to know fully the eternal life which you have for us. And I know that's only going to come when we leave this old world. But in the meantime, Lord, we commit ourselves, we commit ourselves today, we commit our lives, O oh God, to that which we have just heard. That, Father, we will, we will continue the way that you have taught us. We are going to build ourselves up in the Word. We are going to pray in the Holy Spirit. We are going to obediently hang on to the love of God. And we are going to show mercy to those around us. We're going to do that, O oh God, with fear. Lord, that's our commitment today. Let your will be done, we pray. Strengthen us in the Spirit, Lord. Strengthen us by your Spirit, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, friends. Have yourselves a fantastic day. Fantastic. I wish uh, the uh, fishing was open here because I would be bringing my boat down and taking it out for the first inaugural trip of the, of the, week, of the season, but eh, fishing is not open here yet. And so, uh, yeah, I'm going to wait a little longer. But hey, you have yourselves a fantastic day today. God bless you. I mean that. God bless you richly. In fact, uh, I'm going to read to you the last couple verses of Jude as our doxology here. Now to him who was able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Amen.